Hello, my name is Zhong Zhenghao, and today I would like to talk about Hixing SCFTs via the decay and fission of magnetic quivers. This is done in collaboration with Antoine Bouget and Marcus Berling, and is based on the following paper. So, I'm interested in superconformal field theories, or SCFTs, with eight superchargers in space-time dimensions three, four, five, and six. For these theories, I would like to Higgs them along the Higgs branch. So, it's just Higgs mechanism, but rather than giving VEV to any scalars in the theory, I'm only giving VEV to the scalars that parameterizes the Higgs branch. So, for the example, SU3, six flavors, I do a Higgsing, give some VEV to some scalars, gauge symmetry gets broken, end up with SU2 with four flavors. I do another Higgsing, gauge symmetry completely broken, end up with a trivial theory. So this is the kind of Higgsing that I want. Of course, it's quite easy for this theory. It has a nice Lagrangian description, but in general, SCFTs does not have a known Lagrangian description. Take the 5D example. At low energy, I can describe it as an SU5 gauge theory one churn Simons level, four flavors, two antisymmetrics. But when I move it to the UV superconformal fixed point, I don't have a Lagrangian for it anymore. And the Higgs branch itself is enhanced due to massless instanton operators. But nevertheless, I can still study the Higgs branch at the fixed point. One of the preferred options for me is using something called a magnetic quiver. So think about a magnetic quiver as an auxiliary combinatorial object that encodes the Higgs branch of the SCFT. So for this 5D theory, the Higgs branch at the UV fixed point is described by this magnetic quiver. So it's a quiver gauge theory made up of unitary gauge groups. And as soon as I have this magnetic quiver, which encodes the Higgs branch, the next thing I want to do is to Higgs it. And to do so, I'm going to use something called the decay and fission algorithm. So the magnetic quiver is can either decay into a smaller magnetic quiver or fission into two magnetic quivers. Now, translating this back to the original 5D SCFT, it means I can either Higgs it to a smaller SCFT, by which I mean the low energy description has a smaller gauge group, or I can Higgs it into two decoupled SCFTs. These are the two fundamental processes. Now, here's the important part. For the magnetic quiver, if I'm able to figure out all possible decays and all possible fissions, then, which is something that's easy to do using our efficient Mathematica code, then I'm able to figure out all possible Higgsings of the SCFT. Then I can put everything, I can keep on Higgsing it until I end up with a trivial theory and put everything in a nice phase diagram. I can also look at many different 5D N equals 1 SCFTs in the literature and see how they're related through non-trivial Higgsings. Of course, this diagram is a bit too small to see, but please visit the longer version of our paper for the 4K Ultra HD version. <laughs> so, Beyond just relating different SCFTs, Higgsings can also help us discover new SCFTs in various dimensions and help us understand the geometry of the Higgs branch better. So, so far, we Higgs many different theories in three, four, five, and six dimensions. And not only were we able to reproduce the Higgsings via other methods in the literature, we also find many new directions of Higgsing. And many of these new Higgsings are related to the fission parts of the algorithm and what we call the beta decay part of the algorithm. So really laying it thick with the analogy to radioactivity, which is why I would like to call this a radioactive Higgs mechanism. My co-authors did not agree with that title. <laughs> Thank you. Jesus, this was too good. Thank you. OK, this was Zheng Zhao Zhong. Thank you very much. Questions? Next. Next. Thank you. Thanks again. <laughs> ah, so so far, so this is only something a potential for a future, but basically it's useful when you have classifications of all rank one and rank two SCFT say. And if I take a rank two SCFT, do a Higgsing, and for one of the theories that I obtained, and say if it has a flavor symmetry that's not existing in the classification, then I can make a claim of a new SCFT. But we haven't started doing that yet. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Six, I think people have discovered new S4 theories by Higgsing, like Giacomelli and friends. Ah, uh, yes. And for those cases, many of them also has a magnetic quiver and were able, yeah, so that's actually an example how we can 
do the same exact same thing in the future using this algorithm. Yeah. Okay. Next.